Most people, when they think about human rights and populism, they think about how populism is a threat to human rights and progressives then struggle to try and reinforce and, and protect human rights values. Uh, but actually I think that you can come at it from a completely different angle. If you think about how human rights were, were born and conceived, it was after World War II. The people who wrote up and created human rights standards had one thing in mind, and that is how do we prevent a situation arising ever again where you could have something like Nazi Germany. Populist authoritarianism is basically the antithesis of human rights. Uh, human rights is about guaranteeing human dignity. It's about creating an equal chance for everybody in society. So making you into the best person that you can be. Someone who can contribute fully to society. So that's why you have a right to education and healthcare and housing and an adequate standard of living. It's also about making you an active participant in democracy. So uh, you should get a good education so you can understand what's going on. According to the right to education, you are supposed to teach tolerance and empathy and perspective taking and critical thinking and educate people about human rights. And these are all things that make you less likely to endorse authoritarian attitudes. It's why you have social and economic rights so that populist authoritarians cannot exploit massive economic shocks that happen when you have a recession. So for example, uh, the way that most of our governments responded to the recession was through austerity. They cut public services. Instead of spending, uh, maintaining spending on healthcare and housing and education, they took money out of that. And the thing is, these public services operated as a shield to protect people against the consequences of economic shock, so that people did not feel vulnerable. And that's, this is why you're supposed to have a good welfare system, to protect people when they become unemployed. Uh, and so, Human rights was really, it, it, it creates a structure, a system, an environment where populism, populist authoritarianism cannot grow. Both types of authoritarians, the social dominators or inegalitarians, and the right-wing authoritarians, the traditionalists, both of them dislike human rights, but for slightly different reasons. And this goes for all of the policies that they support. They, they kind of support similar sets of policies, but for different reasons. So if you ask them, in the abstract, they say that they agree with human rights standards, usually. But once you start giving them a concrete situation, they change their tune. So for example, you might say, do you agree in free speech? And they'll say, yes, we agree in free speech. You said, do you think that it is okay for um, a group that is campaigning for access to abortion to be able to protest outside parliament? No, we don't. Because why? Well, because that tra threatens traditional values. Uh, and uh, because it tries to alter the, the, the position of women in society. Governments also have a responsibility in terms of the narratives and the policies that they push themselves, so they need to, to stop using hate speech, they need to stop scapegoating uh, migrants. They would have to find alternative ways of funding good quality media. That could be by developing non-profit models of media. So for example, in the Netherlands, you have uh, a news outlet called The Correspondent, which is a non-profit making news outlet. Governments could also give them tax breaks. Another way that you could try and uh, address uh, the, the triggers used by populist authoritarians uh, is through uh, what's called contact or, or mixing or integration. When you have mixing between groups, uh, under fairly normal circumstances, you find that levels of prejudice between those different groups drop. And so does support for populist authoritarians. So this is why in urban areas where there is uh, mixing and where groups aren't fighting over resources, there's lower support for populist authoritarians. That's why London didn't vote for Brexit, for example. Whereas in the countryside, where you don't have this mixing, there is greater support for populist authoritarians because they're able to scare people about migrants and then there's no counterbalance to that because nobody's met any migrants and doesn't realize they're just normal people. NGOs can get funding and work with local authorities, for example, to create contact uh, projects. So that can be exchanges between different schools in different communities or exchanges between schools in different countries. It can be housing projects where you mix different majority and minority groups uh, who build houses together, for example. And all of these projects will bring people into greater contact with each other to develop social relations, friendships. And these things would, as I said before, help to diminish prejudice. So there, there are things that, that NGOs can do as well.